Hi, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com. In this video, we'll go over how to set up and get the best picture for the Vizio P-Series Quantum. We'll describe what each of the settings do, as well as recommend adjustments you should make for gaming, HDR, and movies. Know that we'll be using the remote and the on-screen interface for this, but you can also follow along with the Vizio Smartcast app on your phone or tablet. For a summary of our recommended settings, see the link in the description to our website. The P Quantum has five HDMI ports, but they don't all have the same performance. Ports 1 to 4 support high bandwidth signals, such as 4K 60Hz 444 from a PC. They also support HDR. HDMI 5 is a low latency port which is best for STR gaming. It doesn't support high bandwidth signals like 4K 60Hz 444 or HDR though. The first HDMI port also supports ARC or the audio return channel feature to direct sound from the TV's apps or other connected devices to a receiver. If you want to use an external receiver or soundbar and it supports ARC, then connect it to HDMI 1. For HDR devices like a new console or HDR Blu-ray player, connect it to HDMI 2 through 4. For low latency gaming on an SDR console, connect it to HDMI 5. Unlike Vizio TVs from previous years, this model includes a tuner, so you can connect the antenna to your TV. If you've connected any high bandwidth devices, then the first thing you want to do is adjust the bandwidth of the HDMI port to suit. To do so, press the menu button on the remote and go to input settings. Select the HDMI port your device is connected to and enable full UHD color. If you're experiencing any compatibility issues with older devices, then you can also try to disable this setting. The next thing we'll do is go into the picture menu and adjust the picture mode. We will be using the calibrated dark picture mode as it allows the most setting adjustment and is closest to our calibration goal. Note that even for console gaming, this is a good picture mode to use as it doesn't affect the input lag. We will go over the settings for the lowest input lag later. The computer picture mode is best for PC use as it is the only picture mode which correctly shows Chroma 444. When watching HDR content, the TV shows a similar selection of picture modes you can continue to use the calibrated dark picture mode. The backlight setting defaults to a value of 50, which tracks the HDR EOTF most accurately. If you don't care about an accurate image, then you can adjust the backlight value by increasing it to bring out dark scene details or decreasing it for a deeper image. The auto brightness control option adjusts the brightness of the image to suit your room. It may be useful if you have a varying amount of light, if you watch TV both during the day and at night. In general, it is better to disable this setting and to adjust the backlight to suit though, as it can cause the screen brightness to change unexpectedly. We will be using measurements from our Vizio P-Series Quantum to show how each of these settings affect the picture quality. As mentioned, the backlight setting allows you to adjust the overall luminance of the display. You should adjust this to suit your room, and for a bright room set it to maximum. It doesn't affect the picture quality, so for our average lit room we will set it to 14, which corresponds to about 200 nits. When watching HDR content, the backlight value of 50 is best for the most accurate image. You can adjust this to suit your preference though. The brightness option affects the black level. Decreasing this will crush details in dark scenes. Increasing it results in blacks that appear grey. For the best performance, leave it to the default value of 50. The contrast option affects the brightness range of the display. Low values result in a washed out image as the whites are reduced. High values can result in the clipping of highlight details as it exceeds the display's capability. The default value of 50 is a good safe value to retain highlight details. The color setting affects the saturation of colors. In this CIEXY diagram, the squares are the target points, which is what an accurate display should achieve. The circles are the measured points from our P-Quantum. As we reduce the color slider, the measurement points converge towards grayscale, and the image loses all saturation. On the other hand, increasing it too far past 50 results in oversaturated images, as the measurement points overshoot their targets. You can increase this a bit if you want a less accurate image with more pop, but for most accurate colors, leave it on the default of 50. The tint option rotates the color palette as shown in the CIE XY diagram. 
The default value of zero with equal amounts of red and green is best for the most accurate image. You can sharpen up edges of lower resolution content with the sharpness setting. This does introduce artifacts and ringing around edges though, so should be used sparingly. For high quality content, leave this on zero for no added sharpness. Under the more picture settings menu are some additional adjustments. The color temperature affects the white balance of the image. Cooler color temperatures result in bluish images, while warmer values result in a reddish or yellowish image. Most content is mastered to a color temperature of 6500 Kelvin, which corresponds to a value of normal, so this is the most accurate. You can adjust this to your preference though. We can measure the gamma curve of the display to see the result of the black detail setting. Lower gamma values result in a brighter image, while higher values result in a darker image. The left hand side of this plot affects dark scenes, while the right hand side affects bright scenes. Enabling the black detail setting causes the gamma to deviate from our 2.2 target, resulting in a less accurate image. This can bring out dark scene details more, but it is better to use the gamma setting as we will show later. The Extreme Black Engine Pro setting is Visio's name for the local dimming feature. This turns off areas of the backlight to produce deeper dark scenes, which is great for a dark room. We've found that the medium setting performs best, but you can adjust this to your preference. If you find the screen brightness changes too noticeable, then you can set it to a lower value. Motion is a complicated subject, so you can watch our motion series linked below to learn more about how these motion control settings work. Reduce Jutter and Reduce Motion Blur are two motion interpolation options. The Reduce Judder option can interpolate lower frame rate content up to 60 FPS, while Reduce Motion Blur can interpolate 60 FPS content up to 120 FPS. Note that these settings do add motion artifacts, so should be disabled when watching sports. Fans of the soap opera effect can set them to a low value to reduce the number of artifacts. These are also disabled when in game low latency mode to reduce input lag. The clear action setting adds flicker to the backlight to reduce persistence blur. It works well, but isn't for everyone as it adds very noticeable flicker. If you don't mind this, then you can enable it when gaming for the clearest image. Under the reduce noise menu item are two options to reduce block or signal noise. Block noise is common in digital compressed video. So if you're watching lower quality cable content or low quality streaming, then you can enable this. Signal noise is the analog type, which isn't very common anymore. For high quality content, these two options will result in a less accurate image, so should be disabled. The game low latency option reduces the amount of input lag by disabling processing. As a result, many of the menu items will become unavailable. This is fine though, as we usually recommend disabling them for games anyway. You should enable this in instances where low input lag is important, like gaming or use as a PC monitor. The film mode option detects 24 FPS movies and displays them at the correct cadence. It works well in most cases and can be left enabled if you watch movies. The color space option can be left to auto and it will detect the incoming signal and display it appropriately. We can measure the effect of the gamma setting. Lower values result in a lower gamma curve, which results in a brighter overall image, which can be used to bring out dark scene details if you watch in a bright room. Higher values result in a deeper or darker image. You can adjust this as you prefer, but for the most accurate image, set it to 2.2 to match the gamma that content is mastered at. The enhanced viewing angle option is an interesting new addition to the quantum. The effects are visible from up close as it changes the subpixel dimming which reduces the color resolution. We didn't find it to be effective as you can see in our comparison video which is also linked below. Leave this disabled to maintain more color resolution. If we go up a menu, under picture mode edit we have options to save custom picture modes, lock the picture mode or reset it to default. Under color calibration are advanced color tuner options. The best value for these fine adjustments vary between units due to manufacturing tolerances. You need a colorimeter to set these accurately. So in summary, for most content including sports, movies and gaming, use the calibrated dark picture mode. For PC, use the computer picture mode for Chroma 444 support. Adjust the backlight to suit your room and color temperature to suit your preference. 
If you're watching HDR content, then you can also use the calibrated dark picture mode. The default backlight value of 50 results in the most accurate image, but adjusting this will affect the overall brightness, so you can adjust it to your preference. So that's it. You can find the screenshots of all of the settings we recommend on our website via the link below. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become a contributor. Thank you for watching and see you next time.